My name's Lisa and I am making a tutorial video for everybody on how to uh, warp up an Inkle, uh, Inkle style loom for weaving Baltic style, uh, Baltic pickup style. Baltic pickup style is a form of we weaving where you can uh, work with pattern threads and manipulate them so that you can create the design that you want to create. Here is a little image of some of the design that I was working on just recently after warping up my loom. So the following footage that I have already prepared is going to be a tutorial on how to warp up the threads onto the loom in preparation for Baltic style pickup. The type of uh, pattern book that I use. This is the pattern book that I use to learn to do Baltic style pickup. I recently picked up my loom to work on it and it had been a long time and I couldn't quite remember all the steps I needed to do in order to create what I wanted to create. So I went as usual searching onto YouTube to find tutorials and I did not see a whole lot of tutorials for this style of weaving. There were a lot of card weaving tutorials. There are some very good Baltic weaving tutorials out there. So there are some people that have already put on some tutorials on how to do the weaving once, once it is all warped up. But there weren't a lot of warping tutorials out there. So it's kind of a lengthy tutorial, but I do hope that you find it useful in your venture of, of warping up your loom. And uh, let's uh, get the show on the road. Along with this tutorial video, I am going to uh, explain how to read a Baltic style pickup weaving pattern. The patterns that, that I have here is for a Celtic knot. On the pattern I have H and U. H stands for heddled threads and U stands for unheddled threads. Heddles are the, the little strings. I'm going to show you right here. Heddles, oops. Heddles are these little strings right here that hold half of your, your warp threads stationary so that you can manipulate the other threads to open and close your shed. The first part of my video is going to be talking about how to make the heddles themselves and then I will move on to how to read this pattern and um, use this to wrap your warp strings onto your loom and how to do it according to the pattern. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so making heddles. Heddles um, are going to be made on your loom by tying a loop around a certain span of pegs. These pegs, these loops will be folded in half and, and attached to the, to the strings. I'm using my heddle, this is my, my heddle peg right here, which is all my heddles will be attached to this peg and the top peg. Uh, and that created just the perfect amount of space from here to here to kind of be kind of in the middle. So when you're reading your pattern to find out how many heddles you're going to need to make, in this pattern here, I have broken it up into sections. So you have this section here where you make, uh, you have this section here where you make um, just one of each heddled block, and here you make six of them, and here you make one more of each heddled blocks, because I put one times, six times, and one times. Up here it says H, and here it says U. H stands for the threads that are going to be heddled in, and U means the unheddled thread. So you want to ignore, while making heddles, you want to ignore the bottom boxes. You only want to make heddles for the top boxes. So initially I need to make three, then I need to make three more six times. So three plus 18, 6 is 18, plus 3 more, 19, 20, 21. So I need a total of 21 heddles for this project. 
I hope that explains how to read how many heddles you need in the pattern. All right, so let's go to making heddles. So I've made one because I was testing to see um, if this was the right size because it's gonna come up, it's gonna wrap around my string and come back down like that. And that is actually from here to here, a really good spot for my heddles to be. So I'm gonna start, I have one, I'm gonna start by making my heddles. Um, I think the best friend when warping my loom is good old duct tape. Because it holds things to me where I want them to be. Some people use nail tacks or whatnot. I use duct tape. So I'm just going to duct tape this down onto my, my, my table right there. That's the end of the thread. And I hope everything can be seen here. Let me just move this over here. All right. So I'm going to wrap around the top. And I'm going to come down and wrap around my bottom. That's one heddle if I count that amount right there. So one. Let's just put this down here. Two. just um, I'm gonna hold that down there what I want to do is I just want to cut cut these right here cut my end so I'm going to cut the end of my my long string here that I was using right there okay that's to be discarded let me just tie this this last one up just to give me a chance to work okay so I have 26 loops 25 26 loops here these are all going to be my heddles I use um, crochet mercer mercerized cotton um, you want something that's going to be tough and hold up to the the rubbing that that it's going to take, and also the pressure that it, that it that it has to endure on the loom. I'm just going to come down here, and I'm just going to cut through. There we go. There are my my heddle strings right here. Now I have to take the time, and I have to tie each heddle properly so that it's going to be usable. So let's. Um, what I do is I just take my, my string like so, like this, match up my two ends, match, <laughs> match up my two ends like that, and I just do a little loop, loop knot, like wrap it around my finger and tie it, and then just pull it as close to the end as I can, tighten it, and there you have it, your little, your little heddle right there. One done, 21 to go. I'm not going to bore you guys with all of that. I will cut back to you when I have all of these tied into nice little loops like this. All right, so heddles are tied. Um, I just wanted to explain that when I do this sort of heddle measuring, uh, I am doing it the quick and fast way. If you want to make sure that all your heddles are exactly the same length, which will actually be very nice when you're opening and closing your shed that all the heddles are lined up evenly, you might want to individually tie these tightly down and cut it and do the next one. That will guarantee that all of your heddles are exactly the same length. I didn't do that. I did it the quick and dirty fast way. So, um, my heddles are slightly different lengths, but not enough where I will be bothered by that. 
when I'm weaving. But most of them are this length. Okay, so next we're going to talk about warping up our, our loom. Every loom comes with a tension bar. This is the tension bar right here it, on my loom. Basically, when you pull it this way, it's going to pull on your warp and make it really tight. And when you push it that way, it's going to loosen your warp uh, so that you can shift it and move it through as you're working on your piece. Um, when you are, when you are um, threading your warp, you don't want to have it all the way into the tightest position, which in my case would, would be here up at this end and you don't want to have it all the way down here on the loosest position because then you have nowhere to go to loosen up your work. I tend to put mine like a third of the way back. I mean third of the way from the tightest position. That gives me lots of room here. Maybe even, le even less than that. Maybe I I'm leaving myself a good two inches so that I can pull back and tighten up that warp. It's going to be pretty tight initially when you warp up. Okay, so that gives me plenty of room to, to loosen my, my warp as I need to. All right, uh, let me go get the threads that I'm going to be using. I have a ton of wool um, warp threads, so that's what we'll be using today on this project. So I was lucky enough to score some some yarn, wool yarn, uh, very very thin. It's not very strong, but it seems to hold up during weaving uh, at the resource store. So I have this navy blue and this creamy white, and I'm going to be doing my pattern colors, the the actual Celtic. The actual Celtic knot work in the white and the background color is going to be the blue and uh, if you look at the back you can see that there's an image of the Celtic knot work in the blue with the the white as the background color but I think I like the white being the pattern color so that's what I'm gonna gonna use today so reading the pattern My blue threads are my background colors. My white threads, my blue threads are the background colors. My pink threads are, are actually the white threads. And I'm gonna be reading the pattern from this end to that end. So my first unheddled, the U stands for unheddled, string is gonna be the blue. So I'm gonna start that with, the, with one blue string, unheddled and one blue string Heddled. So let's see how I do that. Okay, so one of my best friends when I'm warping, some people use a screw or a hook. I use duct tape. I like the duct tape. It gives me, it helps me keep stay more organized. Um, I'm going to use th uh, three pieces of duct tape total. Unless, of course, it wears out, but let me just, well, let me cut a big enough piece. There we go. And then one piece. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. That was not graceful at all. This duct tape is from the general Dollar General and it's about the cheapest light lightweightest lightest weight duct tape I've ever used. Okay, so I have three pieces of duct tape here. The first piece, uh, my background thread is going to be the first thread that I that I apply. It's going to be an unheddled thread 
right there that square so I'm gonna do one unheddled and one heddled blue string so what I do what I like to do is I like to tape a good uh, my my um, my thread right there in the end I'll tie this but I'm gonna do what does it say I'm gonna do one unheddled and then one heddled so first is gonna be the unheddled unheddled is gonna go straight down between the first two pegs here see how there's the top peg and the bottom peg I'm gonna go between those two I'm not gonna go over the top I'm gonna go between those two pegs and then I'm gonna go up to this highest peg here back to that peg right there and over this is going to be a very long warp you don't have to use all your warp pegs I'm just you know you if if I wanted to I could quit right there go to the bottom and all the way down you want to make sure you go around your tension bar that's gonna go above and back and over like that that's if you don't want to use all you can always skip pegs but the thing is you want to make sure you're around your tension bar and back here and back over here sometimes the tension bar like in my other loom the tension bar is my last warp um, I do want to make this a full length warp so I'm gonna go over every peg tension bar over and, uh, and there we go I've done one full round of my warp I'm going to just push it all in to the wall because there'll be more coming the next one on my list is the blue heddled so this one's going to be heddled so I'm going to put it up over the top bar because that's where my heddle strings are going to go and then everything else is exactly the same. Everybody's loom is different. They, you have to learn your own loom. Now this is where I use my duct tape because what I want to do next is I want to uh, attach my heddle to the string that I just put on. So I'm going to duct tape this down to my counter like so just to hold it put everything in and take one of my new heddles here that I just created I like to put my knots down I put that down on the bottom of my heddle peg right here come up I go behind my string I come back down and then loop it around my heddle string heddle peg again so that has just been heddled so let's go back to our pattern here so I did one blue unheddled one blue heddled now I'm gonna do one white unheddled and one white heddled so that's where I'm gonna take my next piece here um, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the, the other one. I'm going to have that little tape right here. I'm just going to tape the end because I'm not going to be touching that part again once I get going. So that's going to be taped and I'm going to go up unheld. And over and under. Wait, yeah. And down over here, and that's one one wonderful swipe of my white. Now we're gonna do the heddled one. So that was unheddled, now we're gonna go heddled. So that goes up over the top peg. Over to my tension bar back to the bottom peg and out here 
All right. So, as to not tangle things up, I'm just going to tape that piece down. So now I have a piece of tape for my blue and a piece of tape for my white. And now I have to tie my heddle onto that most recent string that I just applied on. So I'm going to take one of my heddle strings. I like to put my little knot down, go up behind the string, and down. And there you have it. I have two heddled up, two, two up and two down. So let's look at our pattern again. So let me just pull you over for a second to see how I have my threads. My, my yarn is on the floor there coming up and I duct tape it just like that so that I can be hands free. So the next I'm going to unduct tape that blue one and we're going to work with that again. Okay, so next on our pattern is one unheddled blue and one heddled blue. So it'll be just like the first round. So I'm going to take my duct tape up here. No sense in tying all of these down because you're going to end up trimming that in the end anyways. So one unheddled blue. So that was that one. I'm going to take my little duct tape piece and just tape that that down here again. There we go. Get my little heddle. And I wrap behind my my wire that I or my string that I just put up on the heddles over the top, back down and loop it onto my peg. There we go. All right, so next on our pattern, so I just did an unheddled and a heddled. So I just did unheddled and heddled. Next, I'm going to do the white. And as you can see, this is a very wide uh, piece. So what now we're going to be starting into our pattern threads. Every wide piece is a pattern thread. And so instead of one thread, because it's doubled, I'm doing two threads. So I'm going to do two unheddled paint, uh, white, and then I'm going to do one heddled blue and one, one heddled blue. So let me do the white first. So two unheddled white. Now, if you have your pattern threads, if your, your pattern thread is naturally thicker than your background threads, you don't have to double it up. But because mine are exactly the same, I'm going to double them up. I'm going to have two threads for that one box. Okay. So this is the white again. I'm going to untape it. And we are doing un unheddled first. So I'm going to go two times unheddled. One, this is the first time around. want to work with threads that are a lot easier mercerized cotton is very very easy to work with it's strong it never breaks or I've never it's never broken on me okay so that was one time now I'm gonna do another time and this is the big fat box so two times for the big fat box So that was one pattern thread. I'm going to tape that down. And that was unheddled. All right. So next is um, 
Next on my pattern. So I just did the double white unheddled. Now I'm going to do the heddled blue in an unheddled blue. Get my tape up. So heddled, heddled blue is first. going to tape that down while I tie the heddle. Through the back and back down. There we go. Heddled blue. Now I need an unheddled blue. Oh, almost heddled it. <laughs> unheddled blue. piece of tape. This one is not being sticky enough. Okay, on a heddled blue. So I just did a heddled blue and an unheddled blue. Now I have to do a double heddled white. So two whites going over that are both heddled together as one string. <clears throat> And then I have to do it one more time. strings, two white strings act as one pattern string, so those are going to be heddled together into one heddle. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to wrap around both strings and then it's going to come down and there you have it. Oh, this one's a little short. I almost feel like... But that can be adjusted. Uh, you know what? I don't like that heddle. That heddle seems a little short. I'm going to change it out for another one. I'm not going to use that one. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap around both of those white heddle strings. I mean, strings, and down it goes. There we go. So pattern heddled. What is next on our pattern? So I just did that heddled. Now I need to do an unheddled blue and a heddled blue. string go behind and down you go so this is my first round that was my first round of this section right here where I go unheddled heddled unheddled heddled unheddled heddled 
and it says six times right there so I have to do this five more times I have to go unheddled heddled you know repeat five times so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just do all of that and then when I'm all done repeating this five more times I'm gonna come back and we're gonna finish it off with that all right okay so I just finished six rounds of the middle section here which left me with 12 working uh, pattern strings now I just need to do one unheddled pattern string then I'm going to do one 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 this is a this is just an accent on the on the edge it's not part of the pattern um, and the same here this one right here is just accent on the edge so I just have one unheddled that's two strands and then an, a heddled and an unheddled That is the end of the white. I only have to do one more pass on the blue and then all so I need to do a heddled and unheddled. Yeah. One heddled. All right, so this is where I end up tying up at the end here. So I have these over the top, this over the bottom. Just gonna break that. And this is the only tie that I actually do on, on my warps. I just double, triple tie it right in the middle. There we have it. Uh, I'm all worked up. And now I'm going to just show you what I mean about pattern threads. So there's my shed right here. These are the unwarped threads here. These are the warped threads up top. It feels a little little tight right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosen up the loosen it up a little bit. There we go. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Just the whole warp gets a little a little more slack, so I don't break threads.
things may feel a little weird up in the front here where things are crossed over a little bit. That's okay. Once I throw in a few um, strands to get it going, I'm really warm here. All right, so I've warped up every single block. This was done one time, this was done six times, this was done one time. Now we can start our weaving here. These are the end patterns here, which is this section here, and the end patterns here, which is this section here. Those particular sections, those three strands, uh, six strands, or yeah, six strands, and these six strands will not be manipulated during the weaving. Uh, they will just be moved up and down with the shed. The rest are in the pick up and drop pattern here. So let's, um, let me explain something about the dots. So the dots are the pattern threads that are showing when the shed, shed, shed is open. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots there. So if I come over, let me just take this phone up here. So, if you come over here, and all right, so I found this piece of um, foam rubber to just give us some contrast. I'm doing the best I can holding on to my camera, uh, but what I wanted to show you in this pattern piece, um, every, every block with a dot is the pattern thread that is showing towards you when that particular shed is open. So if I pull this up and open this shed, you can see there's a shed open here. There should be, I'm not sure which one this is yet. And of course there's a little, there's a little twisting in the beginning, but the double, the double strand, so you have one double strand, two double strand, three double strand, four double strand, five double strand, six double strand, seven double strands here. And then you have one on the end and one on the end. Only the double strands are the pattern threads. So this shed open has seven double strands. If I'm looking at my pattern, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots. So when I'm starting to weave my pattern, that's what I want up facing me, the seven strands to equal the seven dots. Now if I press the shed down and pull up the heddled threads, there we go. You can see I've pressed that down and opened up the shed. And we count the pattern threads on this shed. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I look at my pattern, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I know that I'm on this row, not this row, because the six threads are up. All right, so I'm going to begin weaving on my, uh, my new row. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Well, I hope that was helpful in, in helping you learn how to warp up your ankle loo. If you have any questions leave them in the comments below uh, and I hope this was helpful I know that when I was looking I was really wishing there was a tutorial similar to this so good luck with everything and happy weaving